please. I mean, can you imagine Arteezy having to play Viper? Do you remember his Viper game at TI4? It's more likely to be a support Viper than a Arteezy or Sumail Viper. Come on. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. I think we'd basically bench the whole analyst panel solely for that prediction. Get you back on there. Ew. Maybe, maybe put me Viper. on as well. My goodness. All right. So game number three. The Weaver comes out, and also they actually pick Tiny. EG never picked Tiny. This team just ignores that hero, but they bust out the Tiny, and then VP bring out the Weaver. We saw the Agadim Scepter Weaver earlier today. It actually won a game. Well, when you, win a, enough. When you win a Grand Finals with a solo mid Tiny, uh, other teams are going to start picking up on it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not actually that surprised to see the Tiny. And, I mean, RTZ has played Tiny a lot, just not without a Wisp. The Weaver, I'm actually more surprised about because there's a lot of burst like if universe gets a blink up on the tusk or if tiny gets a blink up tiny is just food and i've seen some weavers just constantly feed versus this sort of line even brain sap is like half his hp uh, they do have a pretty good amount of burst here with the if the tusk gets a blink the the tiny gets a little farm and you've got the Bane, obviously. But, but if he gets ahead, Weaver could be very scary. We're seeing a lot of Timber. I mean, two is a lot. <laughs> Period. Did you, obviously, you got to, to analyze the game where Sumail went, went out of control. But can he do it consistently? Timber Saul has not really been the most stable hero as of late. Yes, but I think there was a big misconception about the hero before, similar to how people thought that Sara was only good as a position one. Similarly, people thought that Timberzal was only good as a position 3, and now they're giving more priority to his farm, putting in the mid lane sometimes, putting him in the safe lane, so that he can actually get levels and own, because this hero does need levels. Unfortunately, he's going to be harassed uh -oh. a lot from FNG early. This could even be a first blood. Decent body blocking. FNG turns back to hit a creep, then goes back on Sumail. Sakuchi is cooling down. Uh, that this actually made it... Oh, okay. I think he's got him. Whew. Just barely skates through. Actually, FNG the one to collect the kill. Meanwhile, mid lane, a huge flurry of nukes breaking out here, but Fisher on the wrong side, almost trapping PPD. Not quite. So Sumail, uh, for once, not off to a hot start. But at the same time, Phobos is kind of getting sacked. But he's the off lane hero anyways. No big deal, right? He's a Slardar, right? Yeah. I mean, Slardar doesn't need items. This hero hits level 6, presses R, and just things die. It's the Slardar way. You have, to, you have to slim around a little bit oh when they're sprint on. The last time they picked it was at the Summit 2 Finals. That was last winter, almost a year ago. And before that, it was the dreaded 022. You remember that? I remember the that three game. B, three, they had to play their entire ESL 1 in one day. It was a tough time for EG, though they made a good showing. But IG spanked them in the end. The next so, of pain. Yeah, that was ugly. So, what do you make of the lanes overall, Ben? Obviously, Sumail not getting a great start here, but how do you evaluate the other matchups so far? I think it's about even. Like, Phobos isn't getting that much, they're, but neither is Sumail. They're diving Sumail again. Illidan, though, tanking some pot shots here. Yeah, the AA plus Weaver combo is really strong uh, with the Geminate attack. And the mid lane looks kind of to be a wash, too. G's getting okay farm, um, but Peter has to kind of stay in that lane. Yeah, nice thing for the Slardar here. He's being bullied, but he is also managing to get his levels early on. Two and change now is we'll see G skate down to a very fortuitous regen rune. They're going to continue cutting the waves, and now they're rolling. Diving onto DK Phobos, committing for this one. They drop the tombstone, gets off the two-hero crush. Shards not quite there, almost managed to trap him in. Uh, how did that push him out? Because Tuscar is a weird hero. <laughs> I don't know, man. How can some heroes run through the shards, but not others? It is a great mystery. I wonder I wonder how it's been programmed. It's very interesting. Compared to, like, say, a Fissure, where nothing can run through. Mm. Yeah, it's a tough kill, though. Slardar with his ridiculously high armor. And, of course, Sprint. It looks like they're trying to set up for another kill on Sumail. He is nearly out of regeneration. And he's gone for the 1-1-1 one, one, one build here, so not maximum durability or survivability as the Swarm, just a bit off the mark. Still going to try and go for it, though. Cold Feet, not quite proccing. That will salvage it. They did not get the Swarm on him, but yeah. they still have enough mana to make another go. Only one Shikuchi left. No TPs up on EG. They're not giving Sumail the help. It's a short-range Timber Chain, but Illidan, he's not going to be thwarted by this one. He commits in a bit deeper, and one more auto-attack. The long reach down to 8 HP. Sumail does live. PPD is forced to rotate, though. Wow. He attack canceled. I, I think he maybe underestimated the attack slow from Chilling Touch and canceled his attack in the end. Yeah, does at least force out the rotation, drives the Timber back to base, and... He missed out on a lot of XP. I think that was two waves at the tower that he missed. Still... 
And it's, it's a timber. This is a hero that needs his farm to have an impact. Last time we saw a very fast bloodstone for Sumail. But you can catch up through kills pretty easily. Oh, RTZ almost gets nailed by that dragon slave in the middle lane. He's not having the easiest time here. With the Bane rotating, RTZ very low in terms of regen. Yeah. It's still a walking courier at four minutes, actually, Ben. When's the last time you saw that from EG? <laughs> now, there you go. <laughs> they heard me. They've decided to upgrade it for old Artor. But they realize that a poor a, a poor Slar is going to be more useful than a poor Timbersaw, so EG is forced to make the first move in the early game. And they already got a kill, so Illidan already pretty buff. The big winner of the laning stage for EG is the Tusk of Universe. And we saw when his Darkseer got a really easy start that he had a big impact in that game number two, so... Curious to see, I mean, can he do it here on the He's top. just a position one right now, and then Sumail's a position three. So it's it's not it's not that bad. No. It's all right. Still keeping the pressure up on Sumail, but he chains forward, and that's gonna bait out this chilling touch. But it looks like they want to dive this time. They got the swarm on him. They've got the vision. Sumail maybe expecting backup. Throws out the chain, but Illidan finishes the kill. And now looks the runaways rotation from Universe though will kill off the Weaver, but also forces the TP out, giving Phobos a little more freedom top and. He needs it. His levels have been hindered since the early goes there. But now he'll have a little more space top lane. Yeah, they need a swarm on uh, on the timber so they can tower die. That thing takes so many tower hits. It gives you the vision, so Sumail can't do any yeah. fancy jukes there, obviously. I'm still curious as to why they have just recently favored the Timber Saw. The reactive armor is good against certain lineups, but against this lineup, you have a Shaker with massive amounts of magic damage, Lena, even Chilling Touch and Ice Blast is nothing to scoff at. And as Blitz mentioned, amp damage, yeah, you have reactive armor, but nine times out of ten, you're going to amp him early in the fight and just destroy him if you get the jump, so. In a lot of ways, I feel like the reactive armor isn't really a big deal versus Slardar. Well, G has managed to c collect his level 6 now. G actually getting to play a, a hero that could take over the lane this time around, instead of that rough Ember TA matchup where his services were required in the side lane. So They're doing a good job of getting Rue, though, for RTZ. It it's important that he's able to move around and get kills because Timbersaw kind of needs someone to set up kills for him uh, because he's poor. Unfortunately, he hasn't gotten like a haste or an invis rune, but he's still denying G the runes, too. So, Arteezy has been stacking the jungle. Of course, he's going to go back now and try to clear up his camp here. But only level 5. Doesn't have the IO, but that's okay. He's got the regen rune, so he can clear out the creeps. It may take a little while. They give the lane to PPD, wanting to get that level 6 up on the bane. I mean, it's the exact same thing stopping on opposite side. G's taking out his own stack, but he doesn't have the luxury of the regeneration rune. Yeah, he'll have to do it the good old-fashioned way. Uphill both ways and walk back to base. They might go for a kill on Lil here. They have the uphill vision, so they can actually, like, toss Bane, go for a sleep, and then run up Avalanche and kill him. So he has to be pretty wary. Where are my toss shenanigans this game? I live for toss shenanigans. Ben. Yeah, there's no Stardar, though. Who else is good with toss? Centaur. Oh, my gosh. Centaur Tiny I, you is You know what I want to see? I want to see with. you toss in universe. He walrus kicks someone back. <laughs> That's your easy late game initiation for EG. <laughs> that just doesn't sound easy at all. <laughs> First of all, you have to get an egg. Ugh. Why not just blink kick back? Yeah, that would that would be less fun though. That would be significantly less fun, I might add. Mm -hmm. Maybe thinking about a go here on DK Phobos with fear. Parked out in the trees, they now rotate two mid for VP. So Slaughter's still not getting much support, but is getting his levels anyway. And now it's time for EG to go for a smoke here. PPD and RTZ. Moving as a pair. No Fiend's Grip yet, though. Oh, they want to kill... They, you want to find Lena in the jungle because she's, like, super high level and super easy to kill, but they're actually forced to TP up top. No, they're going to be a bit late to the party. Sumail gets blasted away, but while that was happening, Universe bound to kill bottom lane. The Fissure from Lil, a bit short. Can't actually lock him down and back to top where G is being pursued. The zombies and an angry rock hunting. But he's got a stun here. He's got the distance. Looks like he should be able to make it out. So it ends up being an ancient apparition wow. for a timber. In the they end. wanted to get the kill on the Lena. RTZ tried to combo it, but the Dyer the zombie actually the prevented that kill from happening. He wasn't able to toss Lena, wasn't able to get the double avalanche damage, and they missed out on a very important return kill that should have otherwise been secured. We saw the saboteur zombies earlier today. One of them got tossed in uh, instead of uh, a hero, which is what they were hoping for, and I think it was the first series of the day. with The anti-synergy. Yeah. <laughs> the zombies are secretly working for VP. Fear? 
Is getting ready. Top lane, Arteezy starts to rush in. FNG, a bit squishy here, but runs to the south, runs to the north. Juke's here, Juke's there. They're gonna get off the cold feet on Arteezy. My god, man. Is he actually dead? No, barely survives. That was close to being very ugly. And now they'll find one kill. They're looking for more with the tombstone still flowing and creating the army. It looks like that will allow EG to hang on and take the fight. And that's one way to get a kill with the tiny. Not the cleanest, but it works. He almost died there. <laughs> <laughs> he was so afraid of getting juke that he just he's like, I'm, I'm just not going to use the combo. Then I can't miss. And then that, that random Fisher coming out from nowhere. You know that old saying that you... Oh, zap top lane. <laughs> she just gets Slave Laguna. They didn't even need the stun, but... You know, you, you only miss the shots you don't take, Ben. Well, you never miss the shots you don't take. So. <laughs> Good that's, saying. That's the uh, I'm sure they'll catch on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's... Uh, as you would put it, it's a bit of loser talk, but it does uh, does result in the kill in the end. Universe almost has his mech. That's pretty bad for VP. He hasn't really been involved in these fights, but I think going for the mech is an acceptable reason to not help your team out this early. Uh, alternatively, you could have the Tusk fight and have Tiny farm as Blink, but it looks like they're prioritizing the uh, Tusk farm over the Tiny farm. They're trying to make a move here on Sumail, maybe Lil. Dancing. Chilling to the north rune, but it is G who's gonna grab it and he gets a regen. They amp up Sumail now. How do you see the tempo of this game, Ben? Is there a team that needs to make moves? Obviously the mech is a good fighting item. They've got the pretty highly level tombstone. I think EG. EG is the team that needs to move now. Yeah, they have like the Tusk and the Tiny. They also have the Undying. They have these heroes that are just great at killing people early game. Uh, but once VP, you know, they get their Yules up on Lina or Bloodstone or whatever he likes to get early. Looks like it's actually going to be a drums this game as well as the Bling on the Slaughter. They can just chain stun so easily. And they also have multiple cores that are actually going to have farm, whereas EG, you're going to have a somewhat underfarmed Tiny in this game and a somewhat underfarmed Timber Saw at the rate that this game is going. And they also have just have a lot more AoE. Uh oh, Phobo slithers in, but he does get caught there by the combo. It's not quite enough damage. Jumping in his Sumail, though, will clean it up. I got the tombstone down in a decent tactical position. It seems like with the kill and with FNG not yet level six. TP are going to have to forfeit this first tower. Oh, we see multiple TPs down on bottom. I don't think this Observer Ward is going to catch it out. Universe but hiding TP's in the also perfect moving place. On, on mid at the same time. FNG caught out. Level 6 is there. Drops the Ice Blast. But at the same time, mid Laguna committed on RTZ as Illidan's going to dive him with... Actually does get the swarm on him. And now the follow-up might be there for the kill on Fear 2. They chase towards him as the TP. He's trying to wait for the Selena stun, but it's just not coming. Fear, in the end, will go down as well. Barely surviving was PPD. So they end up getting the AA, but he already grabbed his level 6, and it looks like the tower did go the way of fear in the end. EG has to swap priorities now. Now that the Tusk has mech, they have to give some farm to our tour. He is really under farm right now. He's 5th uh, in terms of net worth, 5th in terms of last hits, but he has no items. Like, you have to get a blink so you can get kills, so you can farm your axe, so you can carry late game. And maybe he might just have to commit to an axe so he can farm until late game, but then there goes a lot of your ganking opportunity. You can rely on the Tusk, I guess, to snowball you in, or you can just toss other people in, but he needs to be able to participate in some of these kills without dying. What's the Weaver build this game, do you think? We saw the Ags last time around, but it, it, as I was talking to Purge after the game, he, he felt like it was very much just to counter Lasso. Uh, do, you, do you see an Aghanim's Weaver this time around, Ben? Or do you think mm, Aghanim's else? is actually not that bad versus their amount of bursts. Like, Timbersaw, Tusk, and Tiny have a lot of front-loaded damage, so I think the Ags is actually not as bad in this game. Also, I've seen Illidan play the Weaver a couple times, and he did rush Ags in all the games that I've seen, so uh, I think... It... Every game up until that one that I've seen, the Ags Weaver has been like a disastrously bad pickup. But they, well, it they didn't work in that game. They have other cores to do damage though, so that's fine, right? If your Weaver has no damage and your team has no damage, the Ags is kind of useless. But versus a lot of bursts like this, I think it's fine. They are pressuring bottom now. EG starting to congregate. The Ice Blast is available. Uh, looks like the Dire team not in any hurry to defend this one though, so it's going to be a second tower going down for free. FNG just. Watching helpless. You don't fight into the mech right now, though. The mech is like way too strong, and VP are almost certainly going to lose a fight versus the mech. So it's better to just trade at this point, trying to avoid them, get your own farm up, uh, so you can get blinks up on Slardar and Earthshaker, so you can actually kill them before they get the blink. Easy as a haste, and does he want the deny? No, time lapse. 
just for the nick of time. But now the snowball comes through. Lil will be the sacrificial lamb. Punched away and will drop. Meanwhile, in mid, Phobos kind of eyeing up the EG heroes, but there's a few too many to engage. So they get the tower deny. They also get their own tower kills. Two to zero since the last one was denied. So things looking pretty good. Two man smoke really to the bottom through. lane. Peter and Sumail looking they, for a kill on G. Three smokes. The next one's in one minute, and then that's it for a long time. They don't have him as ever war, so they. M oh, okay, yeah, he's dead for sure. G. Oh, he's got the drums, but you can't run from this combo. Chains are there. Sumail, unfortunately, no bloodstone just yet, but. They'll at least get the kill and get closer to it. But he's now equally farmed to the Weaver, and that was after having like a terrible, terrible start. So Illidan, he's been like trying to farm with the side lanes, but Timberzal has been able to get so many kills that he is just right back in this game. One of the great parts of uh, playing a Timbersaw. Well, it does seem like VP really need that initiation right now. They don't have a blink on the Slardar. Earthshaker also quite far off. And it's kind of hard for them to take fights otherwise, as on top of that, the Lina did not even rush Yules, went for the drums first. They, they just don't have that easy way to start the fight the way that EG do, it feels. Yeah, they, they still have to wait, and the Blink Daggers coming out post-15 is definitely late. And if they have to wait until 20, they might sacrifice too many kills in the meantime, but... I mean, they don't what have to still have, farming, I guess. Yeah. What choices do they have? I mean, it's, it is a dire lineup with Slardar. But, can you really try to sneak a Rocha in this game? I don't think so. Tiny's closing in on Blink though, so VP's timeline is very, very short. Tiny might start decimating with them with a Blink before VP even get their hands on that dagger. And Sumail is now very close to the Bloodstone. Has really caught up after the lading stage. Mm, good vision by Peter. Honestly, I feel like uh, Sumail almost always catches up. I, I don't know if you remember the, the, yeah, the DAC matches where... Well, they played Vici Gaming in their, the, the deciding game number four. He died like three or four times early, still ended up being the highest net worth. Like, it, it was like they never ganked him at all. He's just so good at finding his farm. His team's really good about just setting up kills so that he is involved and that aren't like super obvious. So it won't get counter ganked and he doesn't die. Not dying is more almost more important than getting kills but he you know he started off zero and three now it's three and three now they have like almost all the tools necessary they're online much quicker than vp and vp are going to struggle to deal with this gold deficit we even see slardar eschewing the blink dagger rush going for the staff of wizardry so now they have actually no instant initiation well smoke will be the way that they look for it here bloodstone grabbed it at this exact moment the ping comes out to eg no well they show the spidey senses that vp have delivered thus far not yet scouted but the positioning of eg is this is a tough nut to crack ben yeah and you do not want to go on universe first because he might blink out and then counter with a with a frost shards i mean who do you go on the bane's fairly durable fear has the max tombstone way too obvious it's been it's taking them too long they don't know exactly where they are but they know that they're around and looking for kills uh, they might be thinking roshan no the ping does come out perhaps eg could be baited that way a little bit but they are going to in the end show the lena top illidan trying not to show himself looks like he just got away into the fog that's okay. Universal push in the mid lane. EG. Uh, but now Arteezy has his blink dagger, and he's going to smoke, and he's going to catch them out. They did have vision here. I believe they're going to try to cut them off at the pass, but VP will end up heading to the west for now, dodging the bullet. Do they? For now. <laughs> Courier maybe not so lucky. Oh, that's they the also scepter. saw the Weaver TP mid, so they are more oh. than willing to dive this scepter, up. donkey. Run, donkey. No, it's okay for now. Arteezy was hoping to get it. And they get a ward down deep in that top lane. Now, thinking about, no, they don't care about the card. They want to go for the G kill. Fissure is going to come out, not trying to interrupt this EG initiation. Yules is there, but it's only setting up for the combo from Sumail. Cracks right through two, and now hunting for more. Chucking and then dunking. Bumper cutting, just smacking all around. Like a ragdoll. VP getting run over. Four down Illidan. He's going to be the fifth here. That was too easy for EG. Yep. They just having the blink daggers up and Tusk's farm is actually a huge problem now. Like he, he can start off fights with the blink, he's not gonna die because of the mech, and VP are just struggling to get any sort of farm. It's pretty much Lena who has good items. Decent items. Yeah, drums and eels, but it's been a quiet game for G. One, two, and three. It's it's he's just gotten the Yules as well. So to be fair, we haven't gotten to really see it in action yet. But 
it feels like there's a lot on his shoulders with yep. an underfarmed AA, no blink on either of the initiators, not even. I mean, that's a distant dream, yeah, honestly. And now you have to compare the two sacked heroes, Timbersaw versus the Slaughter. Slaughter, 3,000 net worth. Timbersaw, 7,000 with 13 Bloodstone charges. They want RTZ. Do they get the vision? He's up on the high ground. The blink is cooling down, though. BP are going to chase for this. Gets off the avalanche. PPD looking to turn this. And he's going to sleep the Slaughter. Fissure not coming yet. Lil wants to get the multiple hero Fissure. But now it's given time for the roll-in from Universe. The combo from RTZ. FNG down again. And two have fallen. They only lose their bane and they oh, barely TPing away. Phobos will make it back to the well, but uh, with Smoke Gank, another lost fight for VP. Yeah. Just keep on struggling here, Ben. They cannot deal with these blink daggers. The mobility and maneuverability from Evil Genius is just way too much. Illidan Our likely has to die. Blink. Toss, uppercut, and does manage to time lapse out. The Ogre Club probably saving his life, but Sumail still chases. By the way, since getting the Bloodstone, 15 Bloodstone charges. Mm -hmm. That's that's almost a Bloodstone charge a minute. Weaver's also forced to go with BKB rush build. That's that's extremely bad for Virtus Pro. They don't really have that much damage. They don't have that much survivability on their heroes, and they're just not going to transition well into this late game. They're scrambling for all these items so they can even put up a decent fight versus Evil Geniuses in this mid game, but they are still getting torn apart. Well, From it's like you angle. get you get the BKB and then the Weaver gets ignored at best. And if you yeah. don't get the BKB, then the Weaver feeds. So it's like, what do you do? Get a Deso and split push, maybe. Not, Not a easy bad idea. Get a Deso and do Roche and split push. I think they still had the opportunity to smoke into Roche. They have minus armor from Swarm. They have Slardar to do it. I think they ha they they can do it. They should do it. But can they actually? make EG go to the opposite side of the map. There's like no pressure coming out from any anywhere. They're like, okay, they don't have blinks. Let's just keep killing them over and over because we have more blinks than they do. <laughs> well, by that by that logic, a tune should be invincible when he gets two blinks on Queen of Pain. <laughs> and okay. pressure? I've got more blinks than anyone. <laughs> but I'm useless. <laughs> uh, it's tough, Ben. VP are, they're bottled up, and it really feels like the mentality's been affected. They no longer try to get out on the map, they no longer try to play aggressively, they are just kind of caged on their own side of the map, and do they, can they win the farm war, the way this game's developing? No. They can't. Lena's not a good enough carry versus these like high HP heroes, Timbersaw and uh, Tiny in particular, and they don't have BKBs on all the heroes that they need to, nor do they have blinks on the heroes they need to. They cannot keep up this pace at all because EG are just looking at any opportunity that they can to just decimate them inside their own jungle, like next to their T2s, wherever it may be. Sumails like around their T3s for he's crying camping out loud. Them, he's camping their base. They can't even leave the spawn at this point. Uh, it is worth mentioning the Ancient Apparition FNG did manage to snipe that bottom tower, which probably should have been denied by EG. But... If they get a big A ult into, like, you know, a Fissure stun, that's, I think, not that far fetch of a way for them to to win a team fight. And it can catch EG off guard. But uh, also, Roshan is going to be important. Can they do it? They're going to try for it. The big smoke for you from BP. That top lane is pushing. If there ever time to try to sneak into the pit, this might be it. Moving down. You have branches. to go for it, but if Tiny goes in with a blink avalanche toss on like two or three heroes trying to do Roshan, you lose. And you're also fighting where the, the tombstone's likely going to be on the high ground. It's max level now. They've also got the big uh -oh. area from Timber and EG. Uh -oh. are running for it. Sumail's going to look to scout this out very soon. Clearing out the trees, gets the shock in the pit, and now things get ugly. Illidan instantly BKBs before anything's really happened, and they hunt forward. Arteezy chucking zombies everywhere, gets aggressive. There's the Echo to try and turn it. They may lose Arteezy, but Sumail's here to clean up. 17 Bloodstone charges and counting at 23 minutes and looking for more shock from pulling down. More blood to be spilt here. Looking to turn Phobos into Chop Suey. Does manage to get off the crush so far, two for two. But gotta worry about just how scary this timber is, and that is gonna force VP back. They managed to keep three alive for now. Honestly, not a terrible result. Roshan, though, is dangerously low, and EG want a piece of it. They get off the sleep. Illidan, no BKB, because he popped it so early previously. Okay, now it's a terrible fight. And gets ripped apart, and that makes it bad. There's the buyback on Tiny as well. 
too far behind from VP. Their only option is very obvious to EG. Like, what else would they do besides besides do Roche? It's team good fight. recognition by EG. They, they know that's the only play. Yeah, it, it, it really is. Like, they see that huge wave top, and a lot of a lot of teams would send someone to defend it. EG's like, that means they're going to try to Roche. Let's go punish it. Into the pit, EG go. They're going to commit on this Roche. Radiant get the last hit, and the Aegis. A big win for them, and they keep on moving forward as EG close in on what could be their berth into the upper bracket. Not quite closing this game out yet, but it is looking very EG favored at this point. It's looking mighty grim. Man, our TZ. He hasn't even hit being he hasn't even hit that many of his combos. He doesn't need to. He just he gets off like a regular stun and then Sumail just kills everyone. Ugly. Universe thinking about the jump on FNG, maybe trying to bait heroes forward as Illidan. BKB's up again, could engage. Arteezy does manage to finish off FNG. And Illidan now getting held in position. Lockdown, chain stun for days, nights, and then some. Sumail now up to 20 bloodstone charges at 24 minutes. Almost one bloodstone charge per minute. 3k gold. Suddenly the leader, leader net worth. It's like he had the easiest lane ever. EG are looking strong. I'm liking this Vlad's pickup from Fear. Because they already have a mech, they just need more armor and just more mid-game fight. And it's also really good for taking Roach if they were ever given that opportunity. But knowing that they're just need one or two more small items to carry them to victory. The shards get chucked down and VP hang on desperately. A loss here. They'll have another chance in the lower bracket of this group A, but well, it's going to be a a death struggle to try and make their way out of the group in the into the main event in the top half. Won't be easy for them should they drop this and well not quite ready to try to close out the game EG but you gotta figure it's coming fairly soon now. Shadowblade about to be completed on Universe for more map control. Plate mail up on Sumail. Shiva's I believe coming on the Courier. No actually BOT's will stop off for that. And I mean fear. Plate mail for him. Possible Lotus Orb in the making. Maybe an AC. They're they're getting big items, Ben. I don't think they're going to sense the smoke coming, but their target's going to be Arturo, who has an Aegis of the Immortal. If Peter goes down, it's not a big deal. Moving forward, Illidan trying to jump onto PPD, and the Fissure ends up being good enough. They will get the kill. It's only a Bane, though, and that is the last smoke for four minutes. Checking the inventories. Yeah, they don't have any, so... DP. They get the ward down, but we'll have to see if it stays up for long. And that's a very important ward, though. They can have the opportunity to actually pick them off as they come up the high ground, and that's what you hope for, the chain feed. The chain feed or, you know, walking into multiple man echoes or stomps by Slardar. It, doesn't it feel like it's tougher, though, than when, like, had that, like, the Wyvern Darkseer, like, just that oh, yeah. auto-fight-win combo? Yep. That... That's definitely true. If they had Earthshaker with a blink, maybe they can counter initiate, but there's no good counter initiation from VP. They they force staff him in. Phobos is like, get in there, you old cow. <laughs> just, just pokes him in the rear and maybe the if, cattle prod out. Maybe if Arteezy blinks on Earthshaker, tosses him into his team, and then they get the echo. Alright, they got a courier. Unfortunately, it's EG getting it. Nothing on it, but still extra gold for a team that really doesn't need it at this point. And they will engage on Arteezy, but he's got the Aegis still. He chucks back the Lina. Get over there. And now G runs the other way, but Sumail's looking to clean this one up. He's got the shock on me one second. Will he engage? Blakey forward, cutting off the path of retreat, gets one. Looking for more universe again. Deliver some great teamwork here in the in the clutch from EG. Now hunting for more again with the Avalanche by Arteezy, but. Doesn't seem like it's going to get punished too much. Again, just a smackdown on the Weaver. It hits the other way. Squash the bug is the call. And the bug, he shall be squashed. Too easy for EG down the stretch here. It really was. Well, I guess Timbersaw is a, a hero they have a lot of faith in. This is two big games they've turned to. I think it's more so the Undying and the Bane. Oh, I saw Fnatic first ban the Undying, ver or sorry, first ban the Bane versus them, and it really seems to be that dual lane hero that that just puts out so much pressure uh, on like a two-on-two -two situation that you can't really you can't really go on him nor can you really go on his partner you look at both games that they won this game at this point looking very unlikely for vp that they can make the comeback and both times they put a lot of pressure early like yeah. the aggressive trialing last game this game they've got the the undying it seems like vp are at their or eg are at their best first vp when they're on the offense rather than just letting them have that hot early start 
Now moving on to G. He does pop the BKB, but three heroes dead. Buybacks are going to need to start coming <laughs> out soon. Spider already died back, and they're just looking for more. <laughs> he TP'd in, and then he time flashed back to Fountain. <laughs> I mean, it's about that time where Odin's like, I can't even fight now. Pops the BKB, has no damage to speak of. Maybe the Ice Blast. No, PPD getting off the sleep, trying to survive. They will manage to get a solitary Bane kill, but to what end, really? Racks are down. The net worth is just not looking too hot for BP at this point. And they are likely dropping down here. 27 charged Bloodstone. Yeah, he's okay. almost at the, the legendary one per minute. So close. Time to go farm the fountain. I mean, he has one per level. He can easily just die. And All right. Kill his team. We're, he's almost there, Ben. Two mail. What's this kill? And he's going to get it. One Bloodstone charge per minute almost. And looking to make it more than one per minute. My god, this guy is out of control. 30 Bloodstone charges. I don't know how you can see that and not just call GG. Like, my goodness. Mulling over what went wrong, perhaps, in this slaughter of a game. This is, this is getting ugly. This is worse than a butcher shop at this point. <laughs> they will kill one, Universe, kind of diving the fountain for the hell of it. They have only taken the one lane of Rex, but VP are not going to give it up. Earthshaker has not been very successful today. Yeah, it, I mean, obviously not the strongest offlaner. He doesn't do enough damage, I think. Like, when you're dealing with an Undying or something like that, like, you you need a lot of damage to to kill him, which is why a hero like Gyrocopter or something else might be really good versus him, but... Oh, well, Timbersaw will die. He he literally instantly respawns. Yep. He's already back. <laughs> he could die again and Literally had respawn. zero second respawn there. But he, like, the Earthshakers that we've seen today just have not been able to have that much farm. We saw him get crushed last game in the one-on-one -on -one versus the Darks here. This game, still two, almost 2,000 gold away from the Blink. Mushis also was, like, level 4, like, 15 minutes in. We're just seeing these, like, grievous performances by the old cow man. It, it seems like where he was really good, like, I don't know, what was it, like, three, four months ago was when teams... They didn't really try to contest the offlane, they just tried to like use creep locking so they could get free experience. But now, the teams that are doing well, generally it seems like they run the dual lanes, they run the Tusk, the Undying. C-Deck comes to mind as a team who loves to pressure. Well, why do, you need, why do you need to sack the offlane when you can win it? Exactly. Players? So, I mean, that's where, uh, what does our Shaker bring? Well, it's team? also, it also used to be better because of like the prevalence of like Leshrac and Lina and also Queen, I think, mid. Those are the real strong pressure heroes, and if you pick a somewhat weak mid laner or even an even mid laner then earthshaker just comes into fissure and you lose a lane so that that also has kind of went away because mid is a little bit more farming now especially with a lot of two on twos that we're seeing they're tracking the down lane. illidan mid lane the universe gonna roll through they get off the grip
a space creating hero. It's the one that actually just goes around and will kill nonstop. It's not a hero that you naturally associate with him. And secondly, you've got a hero like Timbersaw, which is also a hero that you're not necessarily dealing physical damage. You're not really going to be the hero that has the best laning phase. And yet, Sumail's able to succeed. Like, mm. we talked about the versatility of their cores and how much they could do. Well, for me, this just kind of proves it, that they are able to play whatever style that they want, that they can pick these run-at-you lineups without any real hard carry mm. and still be successful. Like, you look at that lineup, where's the hard carry? It doesn't really exist. When BKBs yep. come online, VP's lineup probably gets somewhat stronger, but it never even got to that point because they played such an aggressive style. Um, I guess, you know, for most top players, they've got this already, but... For a newbie like me, and many other players who've been playing a lot longer, you go 0-3 at the start of the game and you're kind of like, I'm out of here, I'm done, I can't play this game anymore, I'm just not going to come back in this. Mark of a great player when he can not only come back into the game, but can dominate a game towards the end like that. Yeah, it helps to group up with your allies, for example. If you're losing and you feel like you in a lane isn't going to get anything done, you group up with an allies and you, you set up a gank, and that's what happened at the top.